you should be really excited right now. You're at practically the end of your journey. You got your quadcopter almost completely done except for the mounting of the ESCs, and you're one step away from that. What we need to do right now is program this in beta flight and program your radio so they dance together and make a flying quadcopter for you. So make sure you've got your micro USB cable plugged into your computer, launch beta flight, and hit connect. First thing we're going to do in the setup screen is hit calibrate accelerometer. What that's doing is zeroing out your gyro on the flat surface that your quadcopter is now on. Once we get that done, oh, by the way, now if I move it up, it goes up. I move it down, it goes down. And this is great that it follows my movements. I'm going to go to ports next. What are ports? Ports are serial ports, just like your mouse is a serial device on USB. So is your keyboard. We don't call this USB, we call it a UART. And we're going to use UART2 serial because we have a serial radio receiver on our quadcopter. So just make sure it's ex exactly like this. Hit save and reboot. And by the way, you'll notice here it's rebooting and now it's ready. Next up is configuration. In configuration, we're going to use a quad X. There's a lot of different configurations for many different qu kinds of quadcopters, but we're going to stay with quad X. For the ESCs, we're going to be working with multi-shot. Multi-shot is a tried and true. It's a great fast protocol. It's an analog protocol. Later on, we can change to a more modern F3 flight controller. We were on an F1 NAS32, and these are digital protocols, but we're going to stay with the fastest analog protocol, and that's great for you because you're just learning. We want to make sure all these other settings are exactly the same way. We want the motors to spin with armed, and we're going to get into that a little later. We want it to disarm when we hit this aux channel 1, and we're going to set that up as well. The minimum throttle speed, I like about 180 for this model, so I'm going to just boost that up to 180. And our maximum speed is 2,000. There's a range we always work with, 1,000 to 2,000, and 1,500 is right in the middle. And you'll see that philosophy through this whole process. We're going to leave these boxes the same, just they are, don't touch them. Over here, leave this at 1 kilohertz. Yes, I know it's slow. It's the slow. It's practically the slowest. There are some slower ones, but one kilohertz seems to be okay. We could even slow it down to two kilohertz, and that would be fine too. You'll, you might notice this. You see the load speed here? I'm going to hit save for a moment. And you'll see the load speed is 6%. And if I change it faster to 1 and save and reboot, it changes here again. So we're going to set this at 1 and we'll leave it there. That'll be fine. Personalization, give it a name, your first name, your nickname, anything. I'm going to call it Phoenix. Because that's the name of this frame. So I chose that. We're not doing anything with... You need to select the radio receiver, and in our case, that is a Spectrum Satellite, SpecSat. Select that. Now it's going to come up with Spectrum 1024. That's the slower protocol, and if you're on a... Spectrum DXE, the less expensive radio, you're going to pick that. But if you got the DX6, which is faster, you'll take 2048 and go with the faster speed, the 22 millisecond speed. Leave this and this plane alone. Leave all these off. Battery voltage. We're not going to use that for now. We're going to turn that off and we're going to hit save and reboot. And it's rebooting. And there we have all of our settings are now locked in. Let's look at failsafe. Just take this as it is. If you were to lose radio connection to your radio, or it crashed, or went out of range, the motors will stop. And that's what this does. So leave it as it is. Don't change it. PID tuning. PID. A lot of math here. Proportional, integral, derivative. These are the stock settings. If I move my sticks, the onboard computer on your flight controller is going to do a lot of math to figure out how to change the speed of the motors to do what you want. We're going to leave it this way. Programming your PIDs, adjusting them, that's a whole course in and of itself, and we'll get to that much later. So leave this as it is. Receiver. This is very important. We have to tell it that we are going to be using the spectrum receiver, 
and let's go and save that right now. But it's not going to work yet because we've got to tell our radio about this new model we have. So turn on your radio. Make sure your throttle's all the way down. Press the button. Come down to second to bottom, system setup. Press. Yes. Model select. Go all the way to the bottom. Add new model. Click. We want to create. And there we go. What is the model type? Click. And it's a quadcopter. Select that. Yes. Model name. You can give it a name. So let's call it Phoenix, and I'll speed this up because this is kind of a boring part. Perfect. Hit the back button. Then we look at aircraft type. There we are. Perfect. Now that we've got that, You'll notice now we have Phoenix 215. Very nice. By the way, you can also adjust your volume here. And I'm going to set mine to zero so it doesn't interrupt us. You notice it says no speaker now. Now that we've got that, we still don't have a connection with our quadcopter. So to do this, I'm going to disconnect my uh, USB cable. And I'm going to take a battery. The reason is because I'm going to have to go further away for this. I'm going to make, plug it in, and you'll notice on the Spectrum satellite receiver, there'll be an orange blinking light in a moment. That tells me it is not bound to a radio. Any moment. Now, there it is. You can barely see it, but I can see it. Now, if I try to bind this now, when it's right next to it, I'm going to demonstrate how this won't work, because you do need some distance. Turn the radio off. Press your button down and turn it on. And it's going to try to bind. Bind failed. Why did the bind fail? The bind failed because it's too close. So we're going to go, and I'm going to turn the radio the sound back on because I want you to hear this. I'm going to make it very loud. Volume 100. I'm going to turn it off again. I'm going to unplug the battery, and I'm going to take this and move it, I'm going to move this much further away. My quadcopter is back in the corner. I'm going to press this button, and I'm going to turn this on and let it bind again. Did you notice 22 milliseconds? That's because I'm on the DX6. The DX6E would have been 11 milliseconds. Now that we got that, let's go get our quad cop back. I'm going to remove the battery. We don't need it at this point. And I'm going to put my USB cable back in. And we're connected once again. I'd like to go back to the receiver. And let's see how we go now. Look at that. Goes up and down perfectly. Uh-oh, we have a problem here. Yaw. I go right, it goes left. I go left, it goes right. How about pitch? Pitch is good. How about you roll? Oh, roll is backwards. I go right, it goes left. Here's where we need to make that change in the radio again. So we're going to go click the button and go to Control Setup. We're going to slide over to travel, click, go past sub trims over to reverse and click. We're going to go to roll, click to reverse. We're going to go to yaw, pitch to reverse, and we'll go back. And now, if I go roll right, roll left is perfect. Yaw right, yaw left is perfect. Very good. Let's now go to the next setting, which is modes. Now, the first thing that I want to do is set our training mode. I call that horizon, and that's going to be on this stick right here. I'm going to click add a range, 
and I want horizon to be in the up position. And that is auxiliary two. Notice here, this is in the up position. As I move this down, it switches. So while it's up there, I'm going to take this shaded area and slide it over there. If I save, now this lights up in the up position and off in the next two down positions. I'm going to now set the angle. I like angle mode next. And for angle also, I want that on aux 2. And I want that to be in the middle position. So I want that bar right there. If I hit save, up is horizon, middle is angle, down is full acro by default. There's one more feature I want to add, and that is something called anti-gravity, which is one of the newer features that I happen to love. And I want that also on auxiliary too, and I want that to be in my acro mode. I'm turning that on. Now you can see how this changes. Now I really like anti-gravity, and I don't want it just in acro mode. I want it in angle mode too, so I want to slide this over here. And now, horizon mode is just that. Middle is angle and anti-gravity, and top is acro and anti-gravity. Excellent. Let's set our arm now. Arrange for arm, and we want that on auxiliary one right up there. So when it's in the up position, it's safe. In the down position, I want this over there. Perfect. Now if it's save, wait a minute, we've got a problem here. Armed is off is good, but when I click it on, it doesn't light up here like it does here. What's up with that? Here's a clue. Remember I said the range is 1,000 to 2,000? We're below 2,000 here. And in the up position, we're above here. So it doesn't get to fall into the range the way we need to. So how do we fix that? Well, I'm going to show you. But before I do, let's go back to receiver. Because look over here. If I scroll this all the way up, we're not at 2,000 on throttle. And all the way down, I'm not at below 1,000. So I can't arm because I'm outside of my parameters. Also, all the settings, look at that. Everything is not high enough and too high. So we need to change those. We've got to bring it down. So 1,500 is in the middle and we're below 1,000 here and over 2,000 here. To do that, we go back to the radio, go back to control setup, and we're going to go over here to travel. Notice this, this is our throttle, and we're going to set the bottom number to 148. Just scroll all that down to 148, no, excuse me, to 150. Sorry about that. And click in the top number. Oops. Click on it. And make that 150 as well. Next, we're going to scroll over to roll. Roll is together. And I want to make this not 150, 148. That was my confusion. The rest of these are pretty much 148. And you'll see how that works. It works beautifully. Yaw. There we go. 148. Gear. Here we are with gear again. Again, set that back to 148. And flip the position. And make that, whoops, and make that 148 as well. And the last, leave it alone. Now that we've got that, Let's click back and let's see how we are here. Look at that. Now we are under a thousand at the bottom position and over two thousand at the top. Same for yaw, same for pitch, same for roll. And now when we go back to modes that we have everything in range, look at that. Now arm. Huh, I just worked a moment. Oh, because my throttle's high. Move your throttle down. 
and it will arm in the down position. Also notice when you arm up here, that comes on saying, we're armed, motor's arming. That's what that means. So that's cool. I like that. By the way, this says we have a gyro and accelerometer, but none of these other features. So that's pretty much it because, oh, motors. We forgot the motors. Let's put our battery back on. Let's see how this works. Make sure it's level. It will not, that's an important lesson. If I have it on angle, it won't arm. It has to be level. Now this is cool. Look at this. See how it's kind of like twitching the motors? That's great, except I don't really like the twitching motors. So let's go make a change in that. Let's go back to um, our configuration. Let's bump that up to like 190. And save and reboot. And we got all that because the battery's on, all those great noises. All right, throttle down, arm. Oh, we're not level. That looks much better. Now they're all kind of just spinning slightly, but not enough to take off. Not enough to do that. That would be taking off. By the way, watch this. Throttle up, radio off. Watch what happens. Where's, uh, this is fail safe. Perfect. And if I put it, the radio back on, when established there's communication, watch what happens. It's back online. So, disconnect your battery. Disconnect your USB. You're done. This is all set to fly. All these other settings in Betaflight, we don't need them right now, not on this flight controller. You are ready to take off right now, but we're gonna do one more thing. We gotta shrink these down and mount the ESCs. And we need to, well, we don't need to. I'm going to go do some programming on the camera just for the heck of it. So again, I'm going to shrink down the ESCs, check the camera, and get to the field and have some fun.